In topic E, we uh, did two main things. Uh, we first of all started using fours in addition to twos and threes for multiplication and division. And then we looked at two properties that multiplication has and also some applications for them for division. The first of those applications is the commutative property. So to demonstrate the commutative property, I'm going to use this array. Um, you'll see that I've got a 4 by 2 array. It has four groups of two. You could also call it four twos. And we write four groups of two uh, in multiplication like this, four times two. That's what it means to multiply something. Four groups of two is four times two. And we see by skip counting by twos, two, four, six, eight, that four times two equals eight. Now, what the commutative tells us, property tells us is that in multiplication, if we take our array and we rotate it like that, so that now, instead of having four groups of two, we have two groups of four, or two times four, this will still give us the same product. It will still give us the same answer. So let's skip count by fours to demonstrate that. Four, eight. Practicing that group counting or skip counting by fours is a very helpful strategy. Um, so again, there are still eight objects in the array. Um, so that's the community of property. Let's practice one. Here I have an array with three groups of four. Let's skip count by fours uh, to find our product. Four, eight, twelve. So this array would best be written as three groups of four, or three times four equals twelve. Now again, what I can do is I can use the commutative property. Um, so what will the other multiplication expression be? You tell me. No, now? It's going to be 4 times 3, and the product will still be 12. And this will be true for any multiplication problem. The next property we're going to look at is the distributive property. <coughs> and what I have here is a, a, an array with six groups of four, so I would write it as six times four. Now, you need to have a pretty good facility for group counting by fours to solve this one by group counting. Um, and the problem with counting all of the objects in the array at this point is that the numbers are getting too large. Um, it's it's time consuming and uh, you're, you're likely to make mistakes when you start looking at large arrays if you try to count all of the objects. So we're going to start learning some uh, good strategies for solving this kind of problem. And the first one we're going to look at it is an application of the distributive property. So what I can do here, instead of trying to um, group count the whole array, is I can split off five groups of four from one group of four. So up here, what I have is five groups of four. And I'd write that as five times four. Now that's a multiplication fact that we uh, worked with a lot and we should all have memorized. Uh, five times four equals twenty. And then what we have left down here is really very easy to work with. We have one group of four, um, one t so that's one times four, and we see pretty readily that that's four. Now, what here's here's the cool bit is what I can do now is I can add the two parts of the array together. Um, so th th this is where things I think became a little confusing while we were studying it is all, all I'm about to do is to solve 6 times 4, I'm going to add 5 times 4 and 1 times 4 back together. So before I do any of, of the complicated writing that I think ends up confusing people slightly, let's just look and think about what the answer would be. Well, we have one part of it is 5 times 4, and that's 20. The other part is 1 times 4, and that's 4. So if I look at this whole big thing, 
which the whole thing is 6 times 4, um, we see easily that it's 24. Um, and how we write that out mathematically um, is we put both parts of the equation in parentheses like this. We have 5 times 4. That was the first thing we did. And we're adding it to the other part, which is 1 times 4. Um, and we're saying that that equals, actually we're not quite to 24 yet, but we're saying that it equals 6 times 4. And then the second step, which we've done, is we take these two smaller parts and we, and we solve them. Um, these are called partial products because remember the answer uh, to a multiplication problem is called the product and we're part way there. So we have 20 plus 4 equals 24. Um, and all, all we're doing is, is, is just adding the array back together that we had over here. Um, it, it's really not as terrible as it seems at first. The other way we looked at that is with division. Um, and this is a little trickier. Um, but all you need to keep in mind is what does it mean to divide something. So l let's take a simple division example first. Let's say we have two groups of three. We have two different ways we can divide this. We, if we divide it into two groups, it gives us the size of those groups. Um, so we could say that 6 divided by 2 equals 3. The other thing we can do is we can divide it into groups of 3. Now, that's the same thing, isn't it? But now what we're saying is, is that we have 6 and we divide it into groups of 3, and what we find out is how many groups we get. Um, which is 2. So, two different ways to look at division, um, but they're really the same thing. Now I've drawn a larger array. Um, there are six rows of three here, and there are different ways we could divide this up. But let's say that the problem that we're trying to solve is, well, first, the total of this array is 18, and let's say I wanted to divide it into um, three, uh, divide it by three, rather. The natural way to divide this array by three is, is to divide it vertically like this. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, but again, what we can use is the distributive property to divide our array into two pieces because we're going to start working with numbers that get a little bit big for counting them all up. Um, this part of the array, we have 15 divided by 3. And down here, we have 3 divided by 3. So I can again take both of these parts and then add them back together. 15 divided by 3, um, that's one that we'll work on mastering, but it's 5, you can count that quickly. And 3 divided by 3, there's 1 in each group. So let's back that up just slightly. 15 divided by 3, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in each group. 3 divided by 3, I have 1 in each group. Um, so then 18 divided by 3, I have to add those back together. And... 5 plus 1 is 6. Um, again, the mathematical writing part is, I think, part of what got people a little bit confused with this, but let's just show what we did here. We had 15 divided by 3. Plus... One divide, uh, excuse me, three divided by three equals 
18 divided by 3. Uh, we said that 15 divided by 3 is 5, and that 3 divided by 3 is 1, so we see that 18 divided by 3 is 6. Um, that's a lot to bite off all at once, but it's the same sort of problem as what we did here. Um, we're just taking a more difficult problem and dividing into two parts. And this works for both multiplication and division, um, but we have to make sure that we're systematic and careful about how we approach it.